what is good youtube let's dive straight into this haircut so to start off we want to go ahead and dampen the hair even if it starts to drip a little bit and now we're going to go ahead and create our sections right so we're going to do one on the left side of his head one in the middle of his head and then one on the right side of his head and the reason we're trimming the top first is just so we know exactly what length we're blending into and you'll see right here i'm trying to create my sections as clean as possible i want to make sure that those lines uh, aren't too zigzaggy right so if you need to start over go ahead and do that but you want to make sure that they're as clean as possible and now we're going to lift up that middle section and we're going to cut uh, vertically and we're just going to take off a quarter inch because he gets his hair cut pretty often and we're just going to follow this guideline all the way back and that'll be our reference point when uh, trimming the top I find this system a lot easier when doing scissor work because I used to get lost, right? And this just helps me stay real organized and make sure that, uh, you know, I'm trimming it all even. So after we go ahead and trim that middle guideline, we go ahead and comb it over towards his right side. And now we're going to use that as a, a reference point when trimming the rest. So you can see where the length desired is towards the inside of my finger. And I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, you know, trim everything to that length. And then we're going to move towards the front of his head, just taking horizontal sections, making sure they're clean. I'm trying not to cut past my knuckle, which I do often, just so I don't cut my finger, right? But you, you're supposed to not cut past your knuckle. I'm going to take another section going towards the front of his head. And you can see... It's pretty easy, uh, this system of doing scissor work. And when I get towards the round part of his head where the parietal ridge is, I'm cutting straight across. I'm not sloping it downwards, right, because I want to have that square shape. And now after we trim the right side of his head, we're going to take a portion of that and uh, comb that over towards the left side of his head. Making sure that that section is as clean as possible. His hair is a little bit shorter, so it's hard for the hair to lay down, right? But I went ahead and combed that over towards the left side. And then I'm going to use that middle uh, guideline that we had trimmed at the beginning as our reference point, And we're just going to follow that straight through. And this is how you're going to get a nice even trim. Pretty simple. Uh, let me know if if you guys use this system of doing scissor work, if it uh, helped you in any way, shape, or form. I found this pretty easy. And especially when you're cutting a shorter length on top, it's easier to take real small sections rather than big sections because you don't have a lot of hair to work with, you feel me? And now to go ahead and give uh, the length on top some uh, character, we're going to go ahead and add some texture. And right here, I'm just point cutting, not digging into the hair too much, but just kind of, you know what I mean? Creating some texture. And right here is also a dope technique that I use, especially when the hair is shorter. I just comb through the hair and then I just point cut this way. And now we're going to go ahead and get straight into the fade. So we're going to start off by creating our bald line. And you're going to see, I'm going to give this fade a nice slope around his ear and it's going to drop towards the back. And this is just going to give a nice shape to the fade that complements the client's head. And I'm starting right where the end of his eyebrow is. And then I'm just going to slope it over his ear and drop it towards the back. Creating a nice, smooth, clean guideline. And these clippers right here aren't zero gapped. So they're, they're not, you know, fully bumped. So it's easier to take this line out. And then we're going to go ahead and bought everything under that out. Letting the weight of the trimmer do the work so it wouldn't create too much irritation. You feel me? And I'm speeding this portion up because it's pretty self-explanatory. You just go ahead and bought them out. And you can already see I'm letting the trimmer do the work, but his skin is already getting red. And that's because the client has sensitive skin. 
and now we're gonna go ahead and follow it up with the shaver as well allowing the shaver to do its job and not pressing too hard and now to get into the next step of the fade we're gonna go with our clipper all the way open going up about a full inch and we're keeping that same exact shape that we created with our bald line staying real consistent real clean with it so we don't get lost in the process of fading And you'll see me go over the guideline multiple times to make sure that it's truly open all the way through. And now right above that, we're going to go with our one guard all the way open. Again, keeping that same exact shape. And the system I'm going to be using for fading today is just I'm going to set in all my guidelines and then I'm going to blend downwards. And you can kind of already tell by the width that I made in my guidelines that, th that this blend is going to be nice and spread out. So we can have that nice, clean, smooth transition. And now right above that one guard open, we're going to go with our two guard all the way open. And with this, I'm trying not to create too harsh of a guideline because I'm flicking out drastically as I get towards the length on top. Just trying to, you know what I mean, make it easier for myself when I go in to uh, blend that line out. And now we're going to go ahead and line up his arch. And since he has a lighter arch, I want to go ahead and line that up now. So when I start fading, I don't go ahead and take it up too high to where you can't really see his arch area. You feel me? Trying to keep this as natural as possible without digging into it too much. And now to go ahead and start getting rid of that top guideline, I'm gonna go in with my three guard all the way open. And I'm flicking out uh, drastically right here because I'm trying to blend into that length as best as possible before I come in with my thinning shears to go ahead and soften that blend up. So I'm going in open here with my three guard. And now to get rid of that line directly under it, we're gonna go with our one and a half all the way open. And then I'll go gradually start to close that lever if the one and a half open isn't doing the job like I did right here. And you can see as we continue to go over and play with that lever, that line sl uh, slowly but surely starts to come out. And now right below that, we're gonna go in with our half guard all the way open. And then we'll gradually start to close that lever as well until that line is completely blended out. And you can see as we move down in this fading process, it's starting to come together very nicely. Just continually playing with that lever to see what works and what doesn't. And there was a line that I created with that half guard, so I went ahead and slapped my one guard on there uh, once again. And I'm just going ahead and detailing. And now to get rid of that last line, I'm going to go in with my clipper closed. And then as I move up into that blend, I'll go ahead and open the lever until that line is completely blended out. And right here, I basically got through all my steps, you feel me? And then it's just a process of detailing that blend to go ahead and take it to the next level. And you'll see me use the corner of that blade and it's going to allow me to go into those dark areas where I use the one guard open and just detail them. So now getting into the other side. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to go with our clipper all the way open, keeping that same exact shape. And right here, I'm just going to let you guys follow along uh, just because I explained the other side, you feel me? And right here, I want you to put the pieces to the puzzle together yourself. So I've been getting a lot of comments uh, asking me to make a video on how to build a clientele. So recently I did that. The video before this one, I dropped a video um, giving, guys, giving you guys some tips and tricks on how to build a solid clientele. So if you have not checked that out, go ahead to my channel and check that out after this video because I genuinely think it will add value to you and help you build a clientele and a following, you feel me? And I feel like a lot of you guys think I don't pay attention to the comments, which I do. Uh, that is how I get inspiration for the videos that I do drop because I genuinely want to add value to you guys and help you go to that next level. Because uh, essentially, I feel like I'm in the same spot you guys are. I just create videos and put them out because I've only been licensed for two years and I'm constantly learning new things. You know what I mean? So 
uh, I'm kind of taking y'all through the journey with me as I learn different things in, the, in barbering and different things in life. And uh, I want to share those experiences and those techniques that I learned with you guys uh, so you can grow as well. You feel me? Because I'm still young. I'm only 21. I've only been licensed for two years. So essentially, I'm pretty new to this barbering thing. And I'm just learning as I go and putting out these videos to hopefully help you guys and add value to you guys. Because that is my goal with this channel. Right? I want to teach you guys things about, about life. I want to teach you guys things about barbering and every aspect. You feel me? So... Uh, that is my goal with this channel, is to go ahead and add a value to y'all and help you go to that next level in your barbering career, in your life, and all that good stuff, you feel me? So, now we're just going to go ahead and detail this fade. As you can see, it's starting to come together, and now we're going to go ahead and connect both sides of the fade in the back. So, the reason I wanted to save the back for last is because uh, I just feel it's easier for me to connect both sides if I save it for the end. So I'm going ahead and getting rid of that first guideline like we did on the sides. And then right above that, I'm going to go with my one guard all the way open. And I don't know if you guys can see where his occipital bone kind of sticks out. It sort of creates a light spot. So I'm going to go ahead and try my best to uh, make this blend look as consistent and as fluid as possible. Because it's not as dense there, right? So now to get rid of that, that line between the one guard open and the clipper open, I'm going in with my half guard. And I'm just playing with the lever, trying to get that line as blended out as possible. And I feel like it's important that we pay extra attention to the back because the occipital bone creates a lot of indentations that we need to pay extra attention to in detail, you feel me? And now to go ahead and soften this blend up and have a nice transition into the length on top, I'm using my thinning shears, right? So I'm going in with my comb and I'm going straight up and flaring out slightly. And this is how I'm going to get that blend to... Uh, you know look a lot softer and transition into the top very nicely and now we're gonna go ahead and do a beard blend right so this is a little bit different usually a lot of people like to have that sharp line at the top of their beard but he wants more of kind of a it's not really a natural look but it's a natural look right because he's not lining up the top of the beard so we're just blending down so i went in with my trimmer and then my clipper open and just like we do on the head in between that guideline i'm going in with my lever closed and then gradually opening it as I move uh, up in that or down in that guideline, you feel me? So now I'm going to go in here with my one guard. And it, it's, a, it's essential that you're careful when blending uh, in the beard because it's not as dense as his hair on top, right? It's a little bit of more spaces, so you want to make sure that you're not taking off too much hair at once. So I would move in nice small strokes. And now to get rid of that line in between the one open and the clipper open, I use my half guard. And now to blend into the length that he has on uh, the bottom of his beard, I'm using my half, my one and a half here. And I'm just tapping at that line, trying to soften it up. And now I'm going to use my two guard and I'm just flicking at it, trying to get it, you know, as blended as possible. And now when we put the line on there, it's really going to take that blend to, to another level. And I think it's a dope look. It's different. So now I'm going to go ahead and line up the bottom of his beard. Not pressing too hard because the neck is a sensitive area. And you can see how that blend in the beard looks super tough. It's different, you know what I mean? It's gonna stand out. They're gonna be like, yo, I didn't even know you could get a, a blend in your beard like that. But now we're gonna go ahead and line up his mustache. And you'll see him flinch when I line up his mustache because it's very uh, dense and coarse there. So that's why I hit it with the shaver before I come in with the razor. And then I put some shave gel on there and I came in with my razor. And I'm just cleaning up all those hairs, trying to get the mustache as crispy as possible. And you can see how he's flinching just because it's very sensitive. And I'm going to use my Slick Gorilla Volumizing Powder. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on his hair. And what this does, it gives it a nice dry look that sticks to his roots and adds some volume. And now I'm going to follow that up with the Slick Gorilla uh, clay, clay Pomade. sorry. And I'm just going to work it into his hair. And this is really going to bring that texture out that we created at the beginning. And then I'm going to go ahead and piece everything together. So my man came in for his bi-weekly cut. And we went ahead and put him in the game with the nice mid fade. Some texture on top with the nice beard blend. If this helped you in any way, shape, or form, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Drop a comment down below. But thank you for clicking on this video. Catch you guys next time.